Kirk Cousins is gone, everybody. Not only is Kirk Cousins gone, the Vikings are taking multiple steps to improve the team in 2024 and beyond. And I got just one thing to say. Welcome to the Real Forno Show. Welcome to the Real Forno Show. Hosted by Tyler Bornis, the managing editor of USA Today's Vikings Wire. Writer for the College Football Network. Publisher of Substack Run In Shooter. Host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, as well as a founding member of Vikings First and Skull. Cheers, everybody. Welcome to a free agency episode of The Real Forno Show. I'm your host, Tyler Fornes. With me, as always, is producer Dave. Dave's got the sipper, and I am... Drinking the bush tequila. light. This is tequila. Why? Baby. Oh, tequila. Ooh, very nice. Bush light is great. And if you want to sponsor me, Bush light, I would be most grateful because Bush light <laughs> rocks. Um, let's, let's take a moment and just relax. <laughs> just relax. <sighs> Enjoy the good feelings that have washed over in the last 12 hours or so. It's been actually a very good day for Vikings free agency. You know, it's yeah. only the legal negotiation time period, but people can commit and say they're signing with the team. And we have three brand new players to talk about tonight that we talked about earlier that have so done just that. Mm -hmm. But how many years have we gone? There's been many that... We hit free agency and we sit there all day with a stick poking, you know, the Norseman head going, do something, do something. Yes, it is Anejo, not Respado, to be exact. Oh, I I'm, I'm almost never a Blanco guy when it comes to tequila. Got to have that little bit of age in there. The Reposado, it's minimum of two. Anejo is minimum of four. <sighs> mm -hmm. I love it. Hey, I, I just want to answer one question, then we're going to actually get into football stuff. And thank you guys very much for joining for a third stream of the day. Um, major hat tip to Dave for being at working absolute psycho mode and getting three of these live streams up, which if you don't know, it takes a lot more than just clicking a button to get these things ready to go. So um, major kudos to him. Me. I just show up. I got the easy job, but uh, who was it that asked? Um, Lone Wolf asked me, why not Bush heavy? Dude, I weigh over 300 pounds. Do you really think I want the extra like 20 calories? Nah, Bush light, man. Bush light all the way. Plus you can drink more Bush light and not be as drunk because it's got less alcohol. <laughs> that sort of defeats the purpose. But that's why I go hard liquor. You can drink less and get just as. Yeah, but I want yeah. to enjoy the process. I want to enjoy my oh, beer. And you want to pee like, more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is also very fair. That is also very fair. But and enough about my peeing habits. Let's have a conversation about Kirk Cousins and this Minnesota Vikings team. Now, when Ooh. we were live early. Kirky boy, he's gone, baby. All right, so we're going to kind of use this as a little bit, as somebody mentioned in the chat, a eulogy to Kirky boy. So when we were live earlier today talking about the Jonathan Gennard signing, it broke halfway through our show that Kirk was going to Atlanta and about to sign with the Falcons. For, excuse me, on a four-year, $180 million contract with $100 million guaranteed. Pretty simple structure. Kirky boy gets a hundred million dollars basically in the first two years. And like, sorry, no, he gets 90 million in year one. Cause it's a $50 million signing bonus. Yeah. Hey, Kirk hey, got the bag. McCartney, his agent is a hall of fame agent without a doubt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And here's the thing. The Vikings were never going to be able to do that. 
Um, there have been some people who have thrown out different numbers and stuff. I've heard nothing from a reputable source, somebody who I know to have credibility with those kind of contract numbers. So I'm not going to speculate on what that was. My guess is they never offered any guaranteed money in 2025 because they didn't do it initially. Highly doubt that they would have done it now. They had plenty of time to have these conversations. They had plenty of time to change their mind. They did not want to. And here's a, here's an interesting one. Jordan Brooks, three years, 30 million Miami dolphins. Oh, not bad. Um, and they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to commit many money to Kirk because look, uh, we were going to have, um, a friend of the show on who's a, a foot doctor. Odie, you're fine. <laughs> I know you don't want to be in here much longer, but you're fine. While you're talking and, to Odie, I'm going to address Ben. He says, well, what's the plan for QB? I oh, we'll ben, get there. It's it's coming up, but I think it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. So let's have a conversation about Kirk. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Odie. We know how Odie feels. Yeah. I had to yell at him, but I didn't want anybody to hear that because that might hurt some ears. <gasps> Trying to get Odie to <gasps> calm down. Well, Chatter's in the other room in a crate, so being that they're brand new. Oh, he's on his feet. What in the world are you doing, dog? I know. Kirk's gone. You want to party, but you got to party smart. That's why you drink Bush Light, not Bush Heavy. So Norsevius, are you correct? Are you correct? So the Vikings were never going to do that. They could have had an extension done last March. They said no. Why did they say no? They did not want to pay Kirk that much money. And you know what? Good for them. They knew what their plan was and they decided to stick it out and they didn't let things impact that plan. And I think that's commendable. I think that's really smart. And they knew exactly what they wanted to do. And they did it. Well, now you have the question of what are you going to do a quarterback? How in the world are you going to figure this out? Well, let's be real here. The Vikings don't really know 100% what's going to happen, but they have contingencies. And Kwesi Dofomensa said that. Odie just, they just threw Odie a bone. He should be okay now. Um, I was wondering if it was a beer. <laughs> no. Um, oh, Marcus Davenport got paid, by the way. Did he? One year, $10.5 million max, <laughs> $6.5 million base. Who? Listen, I was willing to... I was willing to bring him back for like a $5 million deal because it would actually save us cap money and we bring another quality edge rusher look when he's on the field he's great mm -hmm. but it's the on the field part that was the question so yeah um sorry to keep getting off track things keep happening so we'll kind of uh, break in with news whenever we see it and the, the reality is that the vikings didn't want to bring on a guy and when you have a 36 year old man who's an athlete coming off a, a torn achilles tendon it can be relatively debilitating to your athleticism I don't care how good of an athlete you are. It doesn't matter. You generate so much power and torque when you throw a football from your base and you generate a lot of that power from your Achilles, that the, your feet, that Achilles allows you to be explosive. And because that, that ligament was torn. Can you hear that? Yeah. Oh, Odie, He's you're fine. Lying. Yeah. He, he don't, he don't like being home. in here. Yeah, mom, mom's uh, mom's at Aldi right now, so she'll be home soon. Uh, when you utilize that much torque and power from your base, well, let me tell you, you might not be able to drive the football the same way. And if you can't drive the football the same way, your effectiveness is going to go down. Let, let's kind of relate it to this. Kirk Cousins have a, has above average arm strength. It's not great. It's not bad. It's more than capable to zip it into tight windows, but it's not elite. Like it's like a seven and a half to eight out of 10. Still very good. Josh Allen's got like a 9.9. .9, okay. So if Josh Allen goes from 9.9 .9 to like 8.9, .9, that's not that big of a drop off. It's still a big drop off, but 
he still has a really good to elite arm. Kirk goes from above average to slightly above average. That changes way more than what Josh Allen does. And when it changes that much, when you don't have that extra element that a guy like Josh Allen provides, where he can run around and he can make things happen on the move, that's a problem. And that's why you see guys, when they lose that arm strength, they crater. Remember Peyton Manning in 2015? He looked like a ghost. Or Drew Brees at the end of his career. Yeah. Noodle arm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've done the study. The study is at 35 is generally when quarterbacks start to slump. Mm -hmm. Kirk's going to be 36. And the Achilles, which you push off of when you're powering through the ball. Yeah, so they didn't want to extend a guy who's about to be 36 with those issues. They wanted flexibility. Kirk has never been about flexibility. He's been about what the dollars mean. And here's what that stands for, okay? It's not about the total amount on the contract. It's about what those dollars represent and what he means is fully guaranteed money. So if you have a max value of $250 million, but only $160 million of it is guaranteed, how much of that are you seeing? Where At if Kirk has sixty million, <laughs> yeah, but are you seeing the full two fifty? Because that's that's like sixty three percent of the contract. It's not that much of what that total number is. So Kirk would rather have a little bit less and have it fully guaranteed. Which is why when he could have gotten two years ago that one year extension at thirty five million, he could have gotten more, but it wouldn't necessarily have been fully guaranteed money. He wanted fully guaranteed, so we got it. Kirk has $100 million fully guaranteed through the, f- the first two years of that deal. $50 million signing bonus. No matter what, Kirk's getting $100 million from Atlanta. And at this age, let's be honest, if he plays anywhere capable, they ain't cutting him after two years. They're still going to be on the hook for $35 million. So he's essentially going to get your three fully get guaranteed too. Kirk might see that whole contract. Or at the very least, he's going to see all of the first three years of that contract. That's what he was looking for. He wanted a team to commit to him. You are our guy. And we want to make sure that you feel that way. So we're going to pay you that way. That's what he wants. He wants you to tell him you're the guy. Well, Vikings weren't willing to do that. And that's why he ended up choosing the Atlanta Falcons. And we know the connection with Julie Cousins who's from the Atlanta area. Look, good for them. I wish them all the best. I wish them no ill will. Thank you for everything you did. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Bye. (laughs) Well, I'm curious if he ends up being like Russell Wilson, where they're going to regret it and owe him lots of money. And he falls off. Maybe. As Davey says, he... What happens if he gets hurt again? Well, the one good thing about this is he's never been hurt before. It's not something where he's been hurt multiple times or even once before. This was the first time he'd ever been hurt. And I think there's something to that. Like, why should I expect Kirk Cousins to get hurt next year? I don't think there's anything that says Kirk Cousins is going to get hurt next year. That's fine by me. Like, no, but I'm not, it's age, and when you get older, things don't heal as quickly. And suddenly, you mm-hmm. wake up and go, "Ow!" So that's who knows. No, I agree. I want to know from NFL fans. He says. Grenard is a projected six to seven million a year guy, and we doubled that. Uh, I don't know where you're getting those numbers because over the caps, uh, Brad Spielberger, who also does work for PFF, he had it pegged at 19 million. It actually had the full, fully guaranteed money at 52 and a half million. So he was off there, but he was right on the average annual value. Look, I don't think we should be mad about the total dollar amount. We can be mad when we see the structure. The structure is huge. Because remember last year, Javon Hargrave signed up a huge deal with the 49ers. It was four years, 80 million. But it was basically two dummy years with 
big base salaries that weren't guaranteed. You all get $20 million signing bonus and really inexpensive base salaries the first two years to make it cap affordable. And then after year two, he was probably going to go. So it's all about the structure. The structure is what matters, not the dollar amount. But the dollar amount is the sexy amount. That's what, when Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter tweet about these contracts, the agents want you to know what the dollar amount is. They want you to know this. They want you to know X, Y, and Z. And they don't want you to know that it's structured in such a way that's going to screw their client. Like, there's a reason why things are are communicated in a certain way. And Pro Football Talks Mike Florio has been kind of fighting against this for the last week. He's like, why are we letting these agents run these uh, these guys like Schefter and Rappaport? Because they're not telling you what the actual contract is. It's all sensationalized. It's all like state-run media kind of stuff. <laughs> it's I'm going to tell you the the most distorted view of it, and then we're we're going to actually tell you what the number is later. But you're going to forget about it. You're only going to remember it was four years, fifty million. Well, actually, it's four years, 40 with 10 million in incentives that they're not likely to hit, but they could potentially get that money. So, well, and that's the deal, whether it be Kirk Cousins in his four years, 180 million, or whoever agent and whatever player, they're going to do the maximum to say, hey, this is the mm -hmm. potential we can get our players. Mm hmm. Right? And come work for us. Give us your 3%. And we'll get you another big contract like that, too. It's it's that business promoting that business. That's why mm -hmm. they do that. Yeah. it's You, you just got to know, just like who you read stuff from. You've got to know how to vet that and go, well, this is what they're really saying. Mm hmm. Let's uh, let's say this. Okay. Always know who's telling you the information and what and figure out why they're telling you it and what you should read between the lines, especially when it comes to like teams telling somebody to put something out there or agents. You can always read between the lines and kind of figure out why they have an agenda. So let's be honest. Almost everybody has an agenda. What is their agenda and why are they trying to push a certain narrative? That doesn't necessarily mean the narrative isn't true, but it's just something to be aware of. But good riddance to the Kirk Cousins era, six years, one playoff win, two playoff appearances, That's all the stats. best to him and his family. Yeah. Stats. He has the stats and we'll see if all, all those uh, Kirk is Stannies, are still fans of the team next year because this is the day that they were, they were um, hoping for hoping wasn't going to happen, but it did. And let's kind of move on to a longer form conversation about these free agents at the Minnesota Vikings signed. And I just want to uh, take one minute. This uh, we have already set two records today of, of our highest viewed video. And we just set a third with 264 people watching. I just want to say thank you everybody for joining us. Um, on Wednesday, it is our one-year anniversary as a YouTube channel, and our goal is to get to 3,000 subscribers. If you could, smash that subscribe button, and hit the ring the bell, and you'll get all of our content sent to you right away, and you never have to think twice about when we're going to do stuff. We will greatly appreciate it. And if we get 30 bucks in Super Chats, I will chug a beer and make myself look like a dumbass. So you will not want to miss out on that. 30 bucks in Super Chats is gonna what's going to make it happen today, okay? Let's let's have a long form conversation about the process behind these players because we already talked earlier about all three of these players. Um, Houston Texans edge rusher Jonathan Grenard, who I know relatively well because he played at Florida. Go Gators, baby! Whoop! And <laughs> Andrew Van Ginkle, offense outside linebacker. He is used as an edge rusher and he can do a little bit of like will linebacker kind of stuff. You can use him as a versatile chess piece, uh, but he's a very effective pass rusher. And inside linebacker Blake Cashman, who played at the U of M. And you can you can see a lot of athletic stuff from him. And he started to really put it together last year under D'Amico Ryans. And the hope is that he can continue to put it together under Brian Flores. I think he can. We'll see how it pans out. But let's, let's talk about the process with these guys. 
Blake Cashman is the outlier. He's going to be 28 at the beginning of um, Blake Cashman. Sorry. And Andrew Van Ginkle are going to be 28 um, at the beginning of the season. I have, I have their actual ages. Um, Cashman uh, turns 28 on May 10th. Andrew Van Ginkle turns 29 on July 1st. So they're, they're on the older end of the spectrum. Quasio Vimenza has never signed a premier type free agent that has been 30 or higher. He signed backups like David Questenberry. He signed, re-signed Andrew DePaula, the long snapper, but he's never made a big signing 30 or older. So that's something to really be aware of here. And Jonathan Grenard is 26. He'll be 27 at the beginning of the 2024 season. What can we look at these guys from a process standpoint? Now, here's what I mean by process. Quasi Nova Mensa has an idea of how he wants to form this roster. Rick Spielman had, had like those thresholds too when it came to the NFL draft. The Green Bay Packers famously have their own thresholds. And you'll hear about it whenever you do a Packers mock draft, what the thresholds are and how they impact things for you moving forward. Okay. We're still trying to figure out what those are for Quasey. We thought it was going to be the 10 yard split to try and uh, prioritize athletes. But then year two, it looked like they were focusing more on GPS data. So what does he want to focus on? How does he want to build this team? And being that this is like the second year where he's actually been able to go out and get real free agents and spend actual money. We're seeing that he doesn't want to go for the high, high, high end free agents. He wants to get smart money. He wants to get upside athletes who have already played well at their positions and pay them capable money. Not all-star Pro Bowl money, but good money. Jonathan Grenard is borderline Pro Bowl kind of money. $19 million a year, but we'll see what the structure is. Maybe there's some funny money in there. Maybe it's a situation where it's like four years, 68 million and 8 million in incentives. Like, thank you, Don. We have our first dollar 99, 2801 to go. And I chug a beer on live YouTube. <laughs> oh, you're going to want to see it because I fucking beer. It's awful. Um, what, what is this process going to be? And Van Ginkle is a good football player. He's not great. He's not going to be this super high upside freaky athlete. He's just going to play the game well, and he's going to make plays for you. He's going to do this and that. He's going to do the dirty work. He's going to get after the quarterback. And those are guys you want on your defense. He's also versatile. You can play him at linebacker. You can play him at edge. You can blitz him up the middle around the edge. You can do a lot of things with him. That kind of versatile player is key. Josh Mantellus was that in the secondary. So when you have that guy in the secondary, like that matters too. But now you have somebody on the second level who can do that. So what does that mean for the Vikings moving forward? What does that mean for how they're going to continue to approach free agency? Well, then they got Blake Cashman, who is a guy who can cover as a linebacker. That was huge. Jordan Hicks couldn't cover. Ivan Pace can't cover. Brian Asamoah, eh, we think he can cover, but can he tackle? That's I think that's why he wasn't on the field much last year. He's, he's a struggling tackler. So now you have a guy who can do a little bit of everything, but most importantly, he can cover in space. That was something the Vikings desperately needed last year, and they didn't have it. Now they do. Kwesi Fomenza has targeted specific types of players and paid them good money, not great money, to fill roles. And these are obviously Flores decisions. Van Ginkle drafted by Flores in the fifth round. Jonathan Grenard feels like a Brian Flores player. Blake Cashman also feels like a Brian Flores player. <laughs> Norsefius, $28 super chat. Uh, hey, I, I greatly appreciate you, sir. Thank you. And you know what? We still have one penny to go. Oh, come on. Round it up. I'll round it up. But that's fine. It, it's it's going to be bad. And you guys are going to laugh at me. And it's going to be hilarious. It's going to be I, a new beer, not what you have left in that can. Oh, I know. I will crack it fresh. Don't you worry. 
I'm I'm not going to be a cheapskate. It's <laughs> I, I will do a fair chug. So it's about identifying. And one of the things I wrote about with the Josh Oliver signing last year, mm-hmm. which I found very interesting, the Josh Oliver signing, I thought was trying to exploit a market inefficiency. Now, here's what I mean by that. Teams weren't valuing tight end. They were paying these receivers exorbitant amounts of money, but good tight ends, you could get relatively cheap. Would you rather pay uh, Christian Kirk $17 million a year or TJ Hawkinson $16.8 million a year? What's your answer? You're going to pay Hawkinson because Hawkinson's elite for his position. Christian Kirk is above average. So I'll take the guy who's elite rather than the guy who's above average for pretty much the same dollar amount. And that's where you can kind of see an inefficiency. That's why the Vikings prioritize trading for Hawkinson and making him a centerpiece of the offense. Now, Justin Jefferson's the focal point, but he Hawkinson is your number two. And that's how you can really take advantage of things. And you can do things in a much smarter way with how you build out your salary cap. So now the Vikings are kind of doing the same thing. They're trying to identify, hey, we can get versatile players because Blake Cashman is also good at blitzing and rushing the passer. So now you have multiple players who can get after the quarterback and do a little bit more. Van Ginkle can do plenty. Cashman can do some. Van Ginkle's even fine as a cover defender. Like His PFF grade in coverage last year, 87.3. Coverage snaps, 147. So it wasn't like he didn't cover at all. He covered quite a bit. And he's still grading out that high. So you're getting guys who can do multiple things and be versatile. I like the idea of where we're sitting right now and how we can continue to progress forward. Where, do, But where does that leave Daniel Hunter? I'm going to be real. Based on the kind of the general progress that I've seen so far today, I think Daniel Hunter's gone and that sucks. Daniel Hunter is a good football player and he is going to make a team very happy, but here's the problem. He's 30 years old in October and that doesn't feel like a lot. It doesn't feel like he's old, but he's, he's not just 30 years old. He's going into his 10th NFL year at 30 years old. To an NFL general manager, that's a lot of wear and tear. That is a lot of wear and tear on a player. It's a lot of, hey, maybe this guy gets a little injured. Maybe this guy isn't going to hold up nearly as well on a long-term deal. You sign a guy who's 27 who's not quite as good for less money, you feel like you're taking less of a risk at that sense when it comes to the wear and tear on a player's body. Now you're also taking a risk because he's not as talented and because he's not as talented that that has its own inherent risk. But my theory is the Vikings are willing to take a little bit of a financial risk on players who aren't quite as talented because they're younger and there's still upside to them. I don't think there's upside to Daniel Hunter anymore. And that's not an insult. Daniel Hunter is a damn good football player. But how much more are you going to get out of a guy like Daniel Hunter? You're not. He is who he is at this point. And that's really, really good at football. So I think the Vikings are trying to look at all those kind of factors. And that's what ended up playing into how they ended up approaching things today. So I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the direction of this team I'm really excited about how Quasi Dofo Mensa is building out this roster. And look, it's awesome. It is awesome. And I'm 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 just excited. This this like 2024 may be a little bit of a down year, but they're building this team out to be able to compete. And quarterback's gonna be a huge question mark. But you have Justin Jefferson, you have Jordan Addison. You get a capable running back, not even a great one, a capable running back, which we didn't have last year. 
and with the improvements that they've already made on the defensive side of the football, this team could make a run at the NFC North. You still have to fix quarterback. You still have to figure out how that's going to work. But if you take a rookie and that rookie starts early, they have the infrastructure to be successful right away. Bookend left tackles who are pro bowl slash all pro caliber. You have an all pro wide receiver. You have a a guy who almost won rookie of the year in Jordan Addison. You have TJ Hawkinson when he comes back. There is a lot to like about how things are set up for a rookie. Oh, we didn't even mention the most important part. Kevin O'Connell. I think he's a great play caller. He's creative. He's smart. He knows how to stack plays on top of each other. And he knows how to create openings and opportunities for his playmakers. That all matters. And I'm really excited to see what this ends up looking like. But we have to figure out how we're going to get a running back. Or sorry, a quarterback. Dave, that's the biggest question. What do you think the Vikings are going to do a quarterback right now? I do believe that the game, main plan is to grab one in the draft, to move up and grab one in the draft. Now, what, whether they go out and get some sort of bridge like we've heard today, that's possible. I don't really care. I think their main focus is grabbing one in the draft. And by all means, do that. Uh, we're all for it. Let's go. We haven't, you can't, you can't find that guy with the it factor, that quote, that quarterback, if you don't draft quarterbacks. And I think that's what they're going to do. Whether they try to get up in the top four or five spots, which I think is probably their plan to grab one of those top four guys, or whether they even settle all the way down for Penix. You know, I have no idea what their plan is. I'm sure they have plan A, B, C, D, that they're going to go for it. And they might try to snag like Darnold as, Mm -hmm. you know, the quote bridge quarterback. But I'm happy that the plan is obvious and that they are going for that quarterback. They're not, if they sign Darnold or they sign anybody else bridge type, or if they stick with Mullins, it's obvious that they're not. It's obvious that those guys aren't the ones that they're going, hey, let's take us to the Super Bowl. You're our next guy. It mm-hmm. is the guy that they're going to draft. They're going to hope that is. And we just have another Super Chat. Just win one. Just donated twenty $20. For the chug chug, and that puts us way over there, buddy. What do you think? Should, should I do it now, or should we wait till the end of the show? Uh, I'm ready to do it now. Oh, you're going to do it too? Yeah. All right. I had the daughter bring Listen. a beer. A hop, hop, hopadilla IPA. I'm doing an IPA. The best ones to chug is a lager. I'm doing an IPA to go along Look, with my tequila tonight. Dave. Dave, I have a lot of respect for you. I really do. What the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> hey, I'm happy today. Today's one of the best days of my life. Yeah. All right, listen, if I'm going that's to be- known me over the years. They've known how I felt about Kirk Cousins because I was doing this long before Kirk Cousins came to this this team. And uh yeah. And I lived in Virginia when we did sign him and i was very vocal about it and very vocal about it for years drove ted and drew a vikings report absolutely crazy sometimes but it is what it is listen i'll I'll say this um uh no (laughs) stop says tyler sounds scared i'm a little scared i don't think you understand how much how bad i am at chugging beer this is going to be an embarrassing thing for me, well, but you know you what? Want me to show you how. Oh, I I've already been shown how I just suck at it. I can't like, cause I know you have to like relax your throat muscles and stuff and just let it flow down. Yeah. I, I don't know how to do that. I've never figured it out. Even though people have shown me, it just hasn't well, worked. So I that. just, I mean, you can drink, you can swallow. You don't have to be the best of them. 
do that. They open up their throat and just pour it all down. I can't do that, but I can down 12 ounces relatively simply. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, you know, it's a talent to be able to open your throat. And you hope you find her someday. But anyways, I won't go there. Oh no! You can't pour it in a glass. I know Dave did, but did. Th- no, I'm gonna I'd... give I'm gonna give him a break because it's an IPA. You don't chug a beer by pouring it like a lager by pouring it in a glass. You do it out of the can. You do it just straight up. Well, yeah, like, that, that's God, what do we call that? When we popped the hole in it, popped a cap. That was shotgunning. I, uh, I I want to answer this question before I, I I end up cracking this beer. Brandon Ding asked if I graduated from STMA. Yes, I did. Class of two thousand eight. STMA. St. Michael Albertville, baby. Okay. All right. I'm gonna chug this thing. It's gonna be embarrassing, and I hope you guys enjoy me look me me looking like it like a jackass. It's gonna be fun. Well, I will keep talking so we don't have dead air during this time. Sounds good. You, it's going to be about 25, 30 seconds. It, it'll be do bad. Do you need a countdown? No, I'll be fine. I got this. Just smile knowing that Kirk Cousins is no longer a Minnesota Viking. <laughs> he takes a break the first time. All right, let's go, Tyler. Everybody cheer him on as we go. Tyler's trying to down this simple light beer. It's nothing heavy like I'm doing, but he is doing this light beer. You shut up. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to do it. We're celebrating the fact that the Vikings have moved on errors. The era of Kirk Cousins is now over. He will eventually be in the ring of honor because of all those stats. And he, he, as well, he should be. <laughs> and and uh, But we're now moving on. A new era is about to begin. And we're yep. all excited for it. And I am going to do mine. What are we doing here? All right. I, I have one thing to say, and this is going to make sense to only about 10 people. Fuck you, Tong. And as Dave chugs his beer, um, listen, everybody, we want to thank you so much for joining as it is every, t- every time we go live. I don't know what is going on with my camera. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to turn tracking on. <laughs> But that's because it, it, it just, yeah, just like you don't want to be like Aaron Rodgers did at the Bucks game when his tackle Bakhtiari, who was released today, by the way, mm-hmm. with, with it, this is important, failed physical. Was it failed physical? I yep. haven't heard that. Yeah, it was a medical. Um, that medical uh, <laughs> distinction. Oh, I'm seeing it in uh, in one of my group chats that uh, uh, they they have seen me chug a beer and it is really bad. Yep, <laughs> it is. It is really bad. Um, I've never been able to figure out how to chug beer, but I can out drink all of you. So remember that. And well, part of that is the size. The bigger you are. The more generally, the more alcohol you can take because it takes longer to metabolize. Or not metabolize, oh, yeah. you're, you're spreading it out. But yeah. Fair, but I can put down like 12 easy. Oh, come no on, problem. Dude. <laughs> you haven't met anybody or drank with anybody. No, no, from no, the no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I said easy. I like, I don't know if I should be admitting this because I'm trying to like be like big boy media guy, but. I, I have done 24 in, in like 12 hours. Been fine. I had a crew chief I, that would do a 24-pack a day like it was nothing. He drank like Bush Light or something like that, but it was something like that. Oh, it, trust me. I've drank plenty of, of big boy beers. I ran a liquor store. I, n- I know how to how to enjoy a big boy beer. But <laughs> all right, l- let's get away from beer and let's have a conversation. The Vikings still need to uh, fix a few positions. And then there's some questions coming in the chat. Um, please throw a couple in there. I will answer some at the end. Um, we have about 10, 15 minutes left. I'm so, still trying to catch up. <laughs> They've been pounding yep. them in like we hopefully were. I appreciate everybody that's given me support during all this. You're great. Fahrenheit 450. 
54. Or, well, Fahrenheit. I'm starting to read wrong. Finsterly. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. Welcome to the show. What a great handle. One beer and Tyler's yeah. drunk. No, I don't think he's that cheap of a drunk. Oh, no, 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 no. I need a lot uh, to get me, to get me that way. Um, all right. So here's where the Vikings need to go. They need to focus on defensive line. They need to find and figure out quarterback. Um, but we don't know how they're going to approach quarterback. They could do a number of different things. And the rumor is Sam Darnold. But do you want to pay Sam, Sam Darnold the amount of money it's going to take to sign him considering other teams are going to be interested? I don't know. I don't have that answer. Well, it depends so, what that money total is. What do you think Sam Darnold's worth? I'd go 10. I don't know if I want to pay him 10. I'd rather just roll with Nick Mullins because Mullins was like, look, Mullins isn't good, but he keeps you competitive. Like he was, he was throwing some really good balls and moving the offense. Yeah. He needs to figure out the turnover thing and not be a dumb, dumb, but there's a, there's positives there. Is Darnold going to be good enough to be worthy of that kind of money increase when you're talking about where the salary cap is? I genuinely don't know. And to me, that's the question. So if it is Darnold, I get it. And apparently he did improve quite a bit with, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, thanks. Just win one. Appreciate it. The what? Just win one gave us another super chat. $10. Oh, well, thank you chug. very much. Hey, listen, uh, my chug was n- nowhere near as good as Dave's, but we uh, practice. Oh, Listen, I young Padawan. Don't worry. I played a lot of beer pong. I I did a lot of chugging back in my partying days, and could never figure it out. I don't know why. But anyways, let's talk about the over encompassing thing with this franchise and how they're going to move forward. Quarterback, they got to figure it out. They got to draft the right guy. Who is the right guy? Is it JJ McCarthy? Is it Drake May? Is it Jaden Daniels? They're not getting Caleb Williams. They could get one of the other ones. I don't know. I don't know who is going to be really good out of those guys, but I would bet on Drake May. That's who I'm putting my money on. Outside of that, I don't know. I really don't. And we'll kind of find out. I think defensive line is going to be a priority. Would not shock me if Dave and I end up going live later tonight talking about a defensive line signing. I know Dave had the wide eyes, but that that's the thing with the, with these things. We'll, uh, we'll kind of figure it out. And hey, it's crazy is known for that. He'll run all the way up to about 11 o'clock tonight, central time. Mm-hmm. Generally after 11, we're good to go till tomorrow. Yeah. Um, let, let's, let's get a couple other um, questions from the chat. Um, Anthony's asking me about uh, uh, Mason Rudolph or Flacco. Now nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want either of them. Uh, Mason Flacco Rudolph, maybe what, 120 years old by now. 38, I think. Flag was going back to Cleveland. Uh, and, yeah, but it seems like so long ago he won the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was. But yeah, that's fine. Um, all right, let's see. Um Chris Sims said earlier that a rumor out of Minnesota is Jefferson's asking for a trade since Kirk is gone. I don't buy it. Bullshit. Look, he said he wanted Kirk back, but he also like Look, he know he wants to be here, and he, he knows the Vikings are going to take care of him and get paid. Unless that comes direct from the organization or a reliable source like Tom Pelissero, Ian Rappaport, anybody who says that there's a Justin Jefferson thing, ignore them. He's told you as such, the Vikings have no interest in trading him. Quasi Opamets was very clear about that at the Combine. You can ignore that. Uh, it's just It's just not going to. Um, 
No. And he already said he'll catch footballs from anybody. And mm-hmm. he did. And he was really good. He had a thousand yards in 10 games. One of three players in NFL history to do that. That's remarkable. Let's answer a couple more questions. Um, I'm trying to keep up. We've got over 342 people watching right now. 356 on my screen, Dave. Okay. Well, you're more up to date than I am. And that's amazing. And I'm sorry, folks. I'm not getting to all your comments. I wish I could. The system does not move that fast. I've got too much loaded against it for trying to make it pretty. And I apologize for that. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, I want to answer this from Stampede Vikes. What's my favorite beer to chug? No, I'd rather chug screwdrivers. Um, I don't really like chugging beer. And, uh, honestly, any light beer is, I, I. you know what? I'd probably say Bush Light just because it's Bush Light. I love Bush Light. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to stop loving Bush Light. It's just such an easy drinker. It's so good. But it's also not good because it's Bush Light. It's one of those things like it's so great to sit out on your deck on a summer day and just drink a beer that doesn't really have much taste. <laughs> I, I, maybe maybe it's the Midwesterner in me and maybe it's just kind of how how we ended up like how I grew up. My dad always had like uh he would buy whatever domestic was on sale. So he would like if PBR was on sale, there'd be PBR in the in his beer fridge, or it'd be Mick Golden, or like he never did he never really did Coors until later on in my life, but he would always just kind of buy what was on sale. So for me, I, I just kind of I tried a couple different things and I was pretty agnostic. The one thing I will not do is drink Miller Lite. I think Miller Lite stinks. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably say Bush Light. I I love me some Bush Light. Um, if you guys have any other questions. Um, the wife got home and Odie heard the car. So uh, say yeah. what that is. He, he's very excited to see mama. Uh-huh. Um, if you guys have any more other questions, leave them there. I'm going to give a couple predictions for what I think is going to happen over the course of the next two days. I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to do something with Harrison Smith. They're going to either reduce his salary or he's going to be gone. And I think it and, will be a mutual thing for him. If he agrees to, Hey, I'll play for seven million dollars or whatever it is. Take pick a number. Mm-hmm. I think that's because he loves playing for this team, and he puts team first, like he did last year, and that's a good thing. Otherwise, mm-hmm. he may say, "Nah, I've had enough. I'm retiring." Yeah. Um. Maybe. No stops like Hams Keystone Natty Light PBR. Now, look, when I was like 22 and I had like no money, I drank a lot of Keystone ice. That wasn't so bad. Uh, not Keystone, like Keystone ice it was like 5.9%. And that was when, like, like, cause I was like, you know, I was trying to party. So yeah, we, we had a little bit of fun, but um, let's answer this from fig nuts. Uh, if they cannot move up or get their quarterback, are you for trading down to accumulate picks in the 25 and 26 drafts? And then build the team for when you can get for your rookie quarterback. <sighs> That's a really difficult question. What are you going to gonna get from t- in 25 and 26? You, you're pick 11. You, you're going to have to move down to like 25 to get that first round pick or, t- or at least 20. It's not like you have pick one where you move down to pick 10 and you're getting the farm. So it becomes a more complicated answer. And in this class, who is somebody going to tra- who's going to trade up to 11? 11 is kind of a dead spot as far as a trade up, unless you have a guy like Romo Dunze, Malik Neighbors, Joe Alt fall, which all those are technically possible, but it becomes a more complicated question and answer. And I'm, I don't know. If if you believe in Michael Penix, trade down as far as you can and just go get him. But you better make sure nobody knows that you want Michael Penix. Because if they know, they'll snipe you. And I wouldn't want to just take Michael Penix at, at 11 because I don't think he's worth that. I don't think McCarthy's technically worth that if you look at my grading scale. They're both mid-second round picks, according to my grading scale. But quarterbacks always get boosted up. 
I mm-hmm. get the allure with McCarthy. I think there's a lot to develop, but the questions I have just have him knocked down. So I, I understand taking him in round one. Penix is a little more complicated because he's 24. The injury stuff ended up being cleared at the combine, which is great to see. But I, I have real questions about so many different things with him. So I don't know. I don't know where I'd be willing to take Penix. Probably starting around like 20. But is Seattle going to take him in 16? Ryan Grubb, his offensive coordinator at Washington, is now the offensive coordinator in Seattle. That's a non-zero chance. They did just restructure Geno. So it's, I mean, maybe they're stuck with Geno and they're just kind of okay with that because Geno is good. But it, it's a complicated question. Um, okay, I want to answer this one, Dave. And then we're going to do, I'll have you pick a couple football ones and we'll get out of here. STS, wait, you picked Bushlight after you started making money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Look, I, I still buy I still buy fancy stuff. Y- you got to remember where I came from. I at, at, Five years ago, I almost died. And from that point, I didn't want to, like, I wanted to try and make it immediate, and I did. And I'm very, very proud of that. But when you look at some of the things that I've done, I worked in the restaurant business for 10 years. Most of that is a manager. I was a manager for eight years. And then I ran a liquor store. When you run a liquor store, you're drinking every day and you're you're not like drinking full beers, but you're sampling stuff all the time and you're always sampling stuff. So you, then you can talk about it and you can sell it. And because you're always trying stuff, I got so sick of craft beer I can't tell you how many triple IPAs I have, I've had. And you know what? I like a good triple IPA. Blackstack is one of my favorite brewers. And I'll tell you, if Blackstack ever want to sponsor me, I'm in. But I got so I'm sick of to- it. And Bush Light is just, it is the perfect, absolute perfect domestic beer. So, yeah, I, I, I always have some Bush Light on hand, but... I usually only do because I got so sick of craft beer. Well, one or two at a time. I don't want to have a lot of craft beer on hand just because I don't drink it. I don't drink it a lot. I barely drink anymore, which is weird because I used to have beers every single day. But yeah, I love Bush Light. And every so often you'll see me wearing my little Bush Light like, like shirt hoodie kind of gimmick. I love that thing. So comfy. All right. Now back to football. Let's Too evil to hope, my buddy. Ask, how about we build up the trenches this season and roll with Jaron Hall and go maybe one and sixteen for the season, and then draft QB in twenty twenty five. Buddy, I'm all for building up the trenches. The more linemen, the more round bellies on both sides, the better. <laughs> because especially we know that depth plays a part if somebody gets injured that if you could have somebody come in and be more than just, oh, my God, we got somebody from bumfuck you, pardon my language, that I'm, I'm going to have to do that, um, that can come in and actually play, it's a good thing. But don't bet on it. They're going to go. This is a quarterback class that they think doesn't come around that often. Mm-hmm. People think there's at least four top good quarterbacks in this class. And people talk about the top six. And we know throughout history, you can say somebody is so good and they turn out to be not so good. And so, and it doesn't really matter where you pick them. The first guy can bust, the second guy can bust, but the third and fourth guy can be turn out to be pro bowlers. So, You've got to give it that shot, where some years you have nobody. Now, next year, yes, we expect Quinn and you, we expect yours, we expect uh, Deion Sanders' kid. There's a couple of them there. But we've also seen them have good, you know, previous seasons and then tank, you know, and just be lousy the next season. And you wonder what the heck happened to them. So mm-hmm. it is. Yes, I want linemen, buddy. Trust me, I want yeah. linemen on both sides of the ball. But I think they're going to go with quarterback this year because they think this class is that good. 
and you take them now, and then you continue to build up linemen and throw linemen at the deal. Like I said, mm-hmm. I think it was yesterday, you want to find cornerstones, and as those cornerstones start to age out or price out, you want to find the next one to fill their spots, right, or at least on the same level, whether it be offensive line or defensive line or corners or edges or linebackers or safeties when you're talking about the levels you want to keep doing that so you keep that that cornerstones one may go out but you put another one in its place and then another and another and what that Mm -hmm. does once you get good enough that leaves that window open for a long time and that's how dynasties do it i do i don't like everybody else here i want to win a super bowl before i die right and for mm-hmm. me, that's a big deal. But I want a dynasty as well. I was in New England when they sucked, right? And then afterwards, they got good and had a dynasty. I was in New Mexico when Dallas had a dynasty, thanks to Minnesota, right? I want to see Minnesota have a dynasty. And the way to go about it is to start building those cornerstones and then staggering them and filling them in. And one of those is with linemen. That's why I love them so much, Too Evil. Uh, I don't know if I'd be willing. And look, I might be the biggest Jaron Hall fan of all time. Let's just be real here. I don't know if I'd be willing to just completely turn it over to him unless he's shown something outside of what we know like, I don't know if I'd be willing to just give him the reins and let's just roll. I like the idea. I like the general construct of where you're coming from. I also think that you don't want to tank. And I used to be pro tank. I used to be pro, hey, let's strip it down the studs, get a bunch of assets, and then rebuild the thing. But I've kind of come around on that because this is such a le- year-to-year league. And if you remain relatively competitive, you can go on a run. You can be the 07 or 2011 Giants. You can be the 08 Cardinals. You can be the 2010 Packers. And you can go from relative obscurity in the wild cards, and you can go make a Super Bowl. You can do those things. So I'm all for like trying to win. And I don't know if Jaron Hall's shown you enough to really be like, hey, let's compete with him. But I, I understand where you're coming from. If they don't get a quarterback, it, look it's a borderline disaster because next year's class doesn't necessarily look as good as this year's. They got to figure it out. And I guarantee you, Quasi Dolfo Mensa is trying to figure that out. And he's been trying to figure it out for months. So we'll kind of find that out. But Dave, that's going to be our show. Um, We had a great one. We had over 360 people join us live. Thank you so, 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 so much. Ring the bell after you subscribe and you're going to get everything alerted to you when we go live and in this environment when we're going live whenever signings happen you are going to want that you're going to want it whenever i throw out shorts with little tidbits of information that are going to help you and don't forget our normal shows real forno show mondays and wednesdays two old bloggers on sundays and all the stuff we have in between including skull search you're not going to want to miss any of it Thank you very much for joining us back in the saddle for purple and gold for days, but you can find that over on the podcast side. There we go. And you're not going to want to miss a dang thing. Let me tell you with everything we have cooking Wednesday is our one year anniversary. Do you really want to miss it? You're going to want to hit subscribe and you're going to want to join us. Thank you guys so much. I can't believe I chugged a beer live on YouTube. (laughs) I'm Tyler. He's Dave. Skull Vikings, everybody. Skull Vikings. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. It helps us grow this community that we all love our Minnesota Vikings. And on behalf of Tyler Fornis and myself, Dave Stefano, Thank you so dearly for watching The Real Forno Show. Skull, everyone!